Hello and welcome back to my channel and oh boy do we have loads to talk about regarding some brand new and upcoming Transformers Studio Series figures. Not only do we have the entire first wave of Deluxe Class 2020 figures to talk about both in their robot modes as well as their in packaged shots but we also have some newly released images of the Voyager Class Mixmaster as well as the Voyager Class 2007 Megatron. This definitely does appear to be a very strong first lineup for 2020 and personally I do believe that we will in fact see these figures before this year is out. I do imagine that they will probably be hitting everywhere in 2020 however I definitely think that we will see a release of sorts at the end of 2019. The first figure that I'll be taking a look at is in fact the newly released Bumblebee which will actually be based on his 2007 Chevy Camaro alt form. Now from this official image we are in fact able to see the battle mask in closer detail as well as the figure as a whole. Personally I am getting major movie masterpiece vibes from this figure so for those of you who missed out on that figure or held off due to its price point I definitely think that this new deluxe version will definitely be a suitable stand in. As far as I'm aware, the battle mask isn't unfortunately removable, so you will just be left with the battle mask looking head sculpt. However, I think that that's quite a nice touch as it gives an inevitable release for a second movie Bumblebee without the battle mask and it also makes the figure look vastly different from some of the previous plethora of Bumblebee figures that we've got in the studio series. We can also see his arm cannon picked out in a black plastic, which I think looks really, really movie accurate. This time it will be in fact an accessory that you can plug into the figure's hand as opposed to pulling the whole arm off. Personally, I'll have to see how that plays out in person before I give my verdict on whether or not it is better than the arm swapping ability of the first release. But as we move down, as you can see, the legs are extremely streamlined in the design and are super movie accurate with the wheels where they really should be. And we can even pick out the ankle joints, which actually do look very, very movie accurate. This release definitely looks as if though it's going to be one of the best entries into the studio series in terms of a Bumblebee movie design. And I really can't wait to complete my 2007 Autobot cast. Very quickly going over the figure's alternate mode, personally I think that this looks like a fantastic representation of the 2007 concept Chevy Camaro like as seen in the 2007 Transformers movie. Once again I'm definitely getting major MPM vibes from this release due to the fact that it looks so realistic to the movie design as well as the fact that it actually has almost identical clear plastic window detailing much like the MPM version. As I stated if you missed out on that release due to budgetary constraints or just missed out in general I definitely think that this Studio Series Deluxe version will definitely be a really suitable replacement. And then just wrapping up the Studio Series Deluxe Bumblebee, here we have an impackaged shot. Now this to me appears to come with a different backdrop than some of the other Bumblebee figures. Personally I did think that it would perhaps come with the same scene that we saw when Bumblebee fights Barricade, but this does in fact appear to come with the tunnel scene where we see Bumblebee rescan the 2007 concept Camaro whilst he is in the 1977 form. So that is definitely a really nice backdrop to include with this figure and I definitely think complements it exceptionally well. As you can see the CGI art for this figure is of course great reference in material as this is Bumblebee displayed here with his cannon as well as with his battle mask. This looks like a great package and I definitely think it shows off the figure in great detail. Moving on from Bumblebee, here we have the Studio Series Hot Rod, who is probably the least anticipated out of this new wave, due to the simple fact that this is in fact a reuse of the World War II Bumblebee moulds, which wasn't necessarily a great mould in terms of movie accuracy to begin with, but personally I think that the figure's head sculpt looks absolutely incredible, as well as the weapon that he comes with, it does look very very detailed, and the weapon itself looks really accurate. I just am waiting for the inevitable release of a Studio Series hot rod actually in his Lamborghini alt form. This looks like a nice enough release and will definitely be paired really nicely with the already released World War 2 Bumblebee but if you're not a completist of the studio series then this is definitely not a figure that I believe you'll be missing out on as it is literally just a reuse of a rather bland mould. And then taking a look at the figure in his packaging, as you can see, we can see the figure 
clearly displayed in that window box display and behind him we can see that he does in fact come with the same backdrop that the World War II Bumblebee came with so once again really isn't a figure that you're getting a great deal of new parts with the CGI render or should I say art design of Hot Rod definitely looks nice enough however the image actually shows him coming with two blasters whereas as far as I'm aware the figure only comes with one so this is really Hasbro putting some salt on the wound and saying that whilst Hot Rod did use two blasters in the movie we're only going to give you one which definitely makes this figure even more lazy than it already is. Personally I would have perhaps liked this figure even more if they could have added an extra weapon in and as you can see from the window display there does appear to be extra room for them to include a weapon and considering they're already saving money on this reused mold they definitely could have added a new weapon. Moving swiftly on from Hot Rod to what I believe will be the main seller from this new Deluxe Wave, here we have an official image of the Dark the Moon Deluxe Class Soundwave and this figure definitely looks a lot better than the initial images that we got of part of the promo CGI image as well as the in hand images. This figure is completely decked out in a very nice premium silver paint deco. We can see some fantastic movie accurate detailing and the head sculpt looks absolutely phenomenal. We can also see laser beam perched on Soundwave's arm which was in fact something that we saw in the movie so that is great that Hasbro are in fact paying great attention to detail to the movie stills from Dark of the Moon. Laser Beak 2 appears to have some great movie accurate detailing so overall for a deluxe class I definitely think that this figure is going to be one of the greater ones and we finally can really complete our main Decepticon cast as we finally have a Soundwave to go along with Megatron and Starscream and eventually Shockwave. Very briefly covering Soundwave's alt form, as you can see here is the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG and you can really see the premium silver paint deco shine in this mode in particular. As you can see the entire vehicle mode does appear to be painted in a really nice almost gunmetal silver type of paint giving it an exceptionally realistic look. We can even see that the hubcaps have in fact been painted silver as well. So a really nice looking alternate form, Soundwave looks fantastic in both his robot mode as well as his vehicle mode so I definitely think that this will be a fantastic all-rounder pleaser and I really can't wait to add him to the collection. And then wrapping things up with Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Soundwave here we have an in-packaged image of him displayed and I think that he looks just as good in his package as he will in fact out of it. As you can see we do in fact have the African backdrop that we got with the Dark of the Moon Megatron so that is just literally a reuse of that backdrop but it's rather fitting for Soundwave seeing as that is the first time we are introduced to him in Transformers Dark of the Moon. As you can see his CGI render looks decent enough. It displays the character in his robot mode with Laserbeak perched on his shoulder and in the packaging you are in fact able to see Laserbeak towards the leg area of Soundwave. So a super awesome looking package and I really can't wait to add Soundwave to the collection. And then wrapping up on the deluxe class assortment for 2020 at least the first wave. Here we have the RC Elita 1 and Chromia 3 pack. I say deluxe class rather loosely as these figures all are considerably shorter than a deluxe class figure however they will in fact all come packaged in one deluxe packaging and will be priced at the deluxe class price point. These are easily the most unique Studio Series entries that we've got so far and I'm actually really surprised and quite happy that Hasbro have in fact released these characters. As you can see they're all individual brand new unique moulds which is the first time that we are in fact getting unique moulds for every single character. In the past we've re usually got a reuse of RC for Elita 1 or a reuse of Chromia for Elita 1. However, all of these figures are completely brand new sculpts, so that is fantastic to see the RC triplets getting the payoff that they deserve, and each and every one of them look fantastic. And for their scale, they all look exceptionally movie accurate. I've got to say that for me at least, Chromia and Elita 1 are definitely the standouts by far. RC does look rather bland, her colour scheme doesn't look as electrifying as both Chromia or Elita 1, but nevertheless, as a triplet trio, all of these figures look fantastic. And then for their bike modes, as you can see, they are once again all unique and individual bikes. None of them are exactly the same, which is fantastic. And I really think that as a bike trio, they look really, really awesome. It is quite fascinating to see how accurate they look in their robot modes and in their vehicle modes, considering their smaller scale. So I really can't wait to add these to the collection. And as I stated, they are in fact the most unique Studio Series figures that we have in fact got so far. And here is the in-packaged shot for the RC triplets. As 
as you can see, this is really where we can see how small these figures will in fact be, as all of them can fit inside a small deluxe class package, but they all look really good once again, and I definitely think that their scale will match the rest of the studio series. We've got some great CGI renders for all three of them on the side of the packaging, and we can in fact see all three of their weapons actually on the right hand side, which is really, really cool as well. So these figures will in fact come with accessories, which will be deemed movie accurate. This looks like a great set to pick up, and I definitely think that you are getting bang for your buck. Now taking a look at the Voyager figures, here we have our first official image of Voyager class Mixmaster, and surprisingly I actually think that this figure looks a lot better than the initial in-hand images that we got previously in the year. This definitely does look very movie accurate, and I think almost matches the level of movie accuracy that the original Revenge of the Fallen Voyager Mixmaster had. I definitely think that the paint scheme is a lot more movie accurate, and it's fantastic to see he's very elongated alien-like arms, and I like how all of the cylindrical elements of the mixer do in fact distribute on the shoulders and the arms. It is quite fascinating to see how this figure can transform from a robot to a vehicle and then of course into Devastator's head. So once again this is definitely a really anticipated character that I can't wait to add to the collection as he will in fact create one of the core essential elements to the studio series Devastator. And then for the vehicle mode, honestly, I think that this looks just as good, if not better, than the robot mode. I think that this definitely captures the appearance of Mixmaster from Revenge of the Fallen exceptionally well. We've even got the very awesome Decepticon esque type of emblem on the front of the truck and I think that the cylindrical mixer looks fantastic. We've also got the fourth faux wheel which wasn't actually present on the original Voyager class so that is some great attention to detailing and it does appear to clear up very very nicely. So a very solid looking constructor con. All of the constructor cons so far have been fantastic and it definitely looks as if though Mixmaster is following suit. And then finally, taking a look at the last figure that I'll be discussing in this video, here we have an official promo image of the 2007 Voyager class Megatron, and personally I've got to say that I am rather underwhelmed with this release. The head sculpt looks magnificent, however the rest of the body looks rather disproportionate, and his entire torso will be in fact a reuse of the Revenge of the Fallen Studio Series Megatron. This is extremely lazy engineering on Hasbro's part, as you can see the main shins of the figure do in fact look absolutely massive. I'm not entirely sure whether or not it's because we got spoiled with the MPM version which was almost to a T movie accurate but this version for me definitely doesn't look very good at all. The only redeeming factor that it does in fact have is a great silver premium paint deco. However for Megatron I don't necessarily think that he's the shiniest of characters so it's not necessarily warranted for this release. And then very quickly taking a look at Megatron's alternate form I actually think that this is the strongest out of the two modes as his vehicle mode actually looks very accurate to that very abstract looking alien jet and definitely matches the same aesthetic that we got with the MPM version. It definitely does look as if though from this image he will transform into a very convincing alien Cybertronian jet. Perhaps the robot mode will grow on me when I have it in hand and it is great in a way that we can in fact complete the 2007 movie Autobot and Decepticon cast so I guess this figure is an essential for your collection especially if you want to get all of the main villains from the Transformers movie franchise and whilst this figure may not be perfect it's definitely an improvement over the original 2007 counterpart. So to conclude today's Transformers Studio Series video, as you can tell from my impressions of these figures, I definitely think that we are dealing with very strong contenders as being some of the best Transformers Studio Series so far for 2020. Soundwave, Bumblebee, the RC triplets and Mixmaster all look absolutely tremendous, they look magnificent and are such an improvement over their original versions. Whereas the World War II Hot Rod, whilst not an essential to your collection, is still a nice touch. It's not movie accurate, so it will probably be the shelf warmer of this wave. And as for Megatron, I've got to say that I am severely let down by him due to his lazy engineering in the torso and the really clunky looking legs. I'm sure that this will grow on me in the future. However, as for now, they are my two least anticipated characters from the upcoming 2020 line. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below. And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.